Hi there again, and this is section 4.3, and this is titled Graphing by Using X and Y Intercepts. We, we are on page 225. Um, the first thing we need to know is what is an X and Y intercept? What in the heck does that mean? Okay, what is an X and Y intercept? Well, let me draw a little picture. Uh, here's an X and Y axis. Here's my X axis and my Y axis. Maybe I should... Uh, designate those a little bit clear. My x-axis, of course, is right here, and my y-axis is right here, okay? I made a line. I just made a line. I drew it in blue, and I drew it here, and you notice it touches the y-axis once, and it touches the x-axis once. The point where the line touches the y-axis, that's called the y-intercept. And I want you to think carefully about this point, okay? Think about if I wanted to write an ordered pair for that point. I would not move left or right, and I would have to move up some amount. The ordered pair for that would be zero, because I did not move left or right, and I'm just going to put Y right now, because I don't know how much I moved up. Zero Y would designate that here is my Y intercept. Okay, I didn't move left or right to get to that point, and then I had to move, in this case, some value up for Y. Okay, now let's talk about my X intercept. My X intercept's right here. It's the point where my line crosses the X axis. That's the X intercept. Now think about how we get to this point. Maybe I should highlight it in yellow here. How do I get to that point? Well, I had to move right an unknown amount, but I did not go up or down. The ordered pair for that would be X, an unknown amount, but zero, so I did not move up or down. So that's a key concept, and sometimes, I know when I was your age, I had a hard time wrapping my mind around this. The Y-intercept has the point zero some number, so it's X that was actually zero to find the Y-intercept, where on the X-axis, the point for the X-intercept would be X zero, because again, I'm moving a certain way to the right or left, I don't know what that is, but I am not moving up or down, so that's where that zero for Y is coming from. Now, it is possible to have lines that only have a Y or X intercept. Like, I drew this line in green. It's not perfectly drawn, but if pretend that this line was parallel to the X axis, in this case, you notice, I would only have a Y intercept for that line. I would not have a Y and X intercept, like I do for the blue line. In this red line I drew, you notice that if this line is parallel to the y-axis, it would only have an x-intercept. Again, I don't know what that point is. I would call it x0 right now. I had to move left a certain amount, and I don't move up or down. So that's the first thing. That's what it means to have an x and y-intercept. Now, how can I graph by using intercepts? Well, the first thing I have to know how to do is find the intercept. So how do I find an intercept? Because if you look on page 229, question 10, it says find the directions are to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph of the equation. So really, they're not even asking me to graph this problem. They're just asking me to find what the intercepts are. Well, that's easy to do. Let's first of all get the x-intercept. Now remember, the x-intercept the x-intercept is the point x comma zero. Y has to be zero when you're finding the x-intercept. Remember, the x-intercept is where our line crosses the x-axis. So if I go back a slide, remember, that would be like here. And remember, this point that touches the x-axis always has a y value of zero. So this is very easy to find. To find out what the x-intercept is, just take zero and plug it in for y. Y must be zero at the x-intercept. So I'm going to do that. If I plug in zero for y, I have 3x plus nothing equals 6. 
and maybe I should have put more complete steps here, I think I will, which means 3x equals 6, and obviously I can divide by 3, and that's why I said x is 2. That means I had the point 2, 0. Okay? I ended up with the point 2, 0 for my x-intercept. So this point must have been 2 units over. It was 2, 0 if I was to graph it. That's my x-intercept. I just figured it out. Now, I got to find the y-intercept. I'm out of room on this slide, so I'm going to go to the next slide. So I'm using the same equation. I want to find my y-intercept. So how do I do that? Well, remember, the first thing is, is to find the y-intercept, that's a point on the y-axis. A point on the y-axis must have an x value of 0, because I don't move left or right to be on the y-axis. So the x value must have been a 0 and then I have an unknown y value. So all I got to do to find the y-intercept is plug in 0 for x. So I'll do that. I'll plug in a 0 for x. That gives me nothing plus 0.5y equals 6, which means I have 0.5y equals 6. I can divide each side by 0.5, and I just found out that y is 12, which means my y-intercept must have been the point 0, 12. So if I actually did graph this problem, there's the point 2, 0, there's the point 0, 12. All I'd have to do is get my ruler out and draw a line through it and put arrows at the end, and I'd be done. They did not ask me in this question to draw a graph. They just asked me to find the intercepts. I found them both. 0, 12 is the y-intercept, and if I go back a slide, 2, 0 was the x-intercept. If you go to question 12, here's another, we'll do one more sample. Let's get the x-intercept first. Well, to find the x-intercept, remember, I got to plug in 0 for y. So if I plug in 0 for y, I get 0 equals 2x plus 24. I got to find out what x is. So I'll take away 24 from each side, which leaves me 2x equals negative 24. I can then divide by 2. I just found out x is negative 12. So negative 12, 0 is my x-intercept. That's where my graph crosses the x-axis. Now I've got to find the y-intercept. Well, that means I've got to plug in 0 for x, because remember, the y-intercept, x is always 0. So if I plug in 0 for x, I get y equals 0 plus 24. That means y equals 24. There's my y-intercept. So my x-intercept in this problem, remember, they didn't ask me to graph it in 12. They just wanted the intercepts. Here's my x-intercept, negative 12, 0. Here's my y-intercept, 0, 24. Very simple to find the intercepts. In question 22, they ask us to graph this, and they want me to label the points where the line crosses the axis. Well, that means I've got to find the intercept. So let's get the x-intercept first in the same way I, I've just previously shown you. So the first thing I will do to get the x-intercept, make y 0. So if I make y 0, I get 3x equals 15. Well, I can quickly divide each side by 3, and I get x equals 5. So my x-intercept would be 5, 0, and I will go ahead and graph that. 5 right, 0 up. Now I have to find the y-intercept. Let me get this out of the way so you can see that clearly. Y-intercept. Well, first of all, I have to make x 0. So if I go up here and I make x 0, I have 3 times 0, which is nothing. Nothing plus y is 15. Well, that means y is 15. That means I have the point 0, 15 I have to graph. So, well, okay, wait a minute. Before I graph that point, if you look at my screen here, uh, I don't have a very good scale picked. 0, 15 is going to go off my picture, so I'm going to change my scale. I'm going to change the scale to 2's going up. You can see I did that. So 0, 15 would be here. Again, it is completely legal for you to keep the x axis scale as it is and to change the y axis scale to something different. That's fine. So once I have the point 5, 0 and the point 0, 15 graph, I can now take my ruler out, as you see I did, draw a line through these two points, and put arrows at the end. There is the graph 
of question 22. And as you can see, I did label my axis. I have the point 0, 015, which I already had here, as one of my as my y-intercept or, or where I crossed the y-axis, and the point 50 here is my x-intercept where I crossed the x-axis. I did label uh, those points. Okay. I think that uh, would be that's sufficient to get you going on this today. If you have any questions, of course, when we start class tomorrow, uh, feel free to ask. All right.